Hey everybody, Mark here back at the hangar. Now that we've got the C-Max up on its uh, stands and the ramps removed, we're gonna work today on grinding back the area around the damage section so that we can have a nice uh, substrate to do our new glass layups on. So that's what we're concentrating on in today's video. Thanks for joining us, let's get started. I'm gonna try two different machines to do this, either a orbital sander with a 40 grit or a um, rotary grinder with a grinding wheel on it. So we'll see which one works the best and go from there. So now that we've got the bottom surface of the aircraft ready, I do wanna talk about protection for you if you're doing this kind of work yourself. And it's absolutely essential that you protect yourself. And that's the outside and the inside. So outside, we're gonna be using nitrile gloves that will really go a long way towards uh, keeping your fingers free of all that irritating uh, uh, fiberglass. Also, Tyvek suit, you know, completely over your entire body, including your hoodie and your feet. Same thing, keeps all that uh, fiberglass dust and all off of you. Inside, uh, we've got a couple of considerations. Obviously, your lungs you want to protect for all of this stuff. From uh, grinding down, where you're going to have dust particles with fiberglass, uh, very, very bad for your lungs, so you definitely want to have a respirator. So um, what does it look like? Well, a decent one like this goes around your neck and your face, completely closes it off so that you're not taking any uh, particles into your lungs, and you got to protect your eyes. So you got to have goggles for that as well. Keep those particles out of your eyes so you don't cause any problem. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Get that uh, protective gear, put it on, utilize it and uh, sweat your butt off like I'm gonna do. All right, on to the actual work itself. So, here we go. Okay, so the uh, orbital sander did a decent job, uh, but it is rather slow at it. Um, I think it'll be much better for sort of a finish grind or a finish uh, sand after I've done some more intensive grinding with the uh, circular grinder. So I'm gonna try the grinder now and see how that goes. I don't know whether you can see or not. This is getting awful dusty. Well, we got some water dripping out here now, which indicates to me that we're through to the through the hole here with at least a pinpoint of damage. That's very thin right there. Well, oh, got my gloves off already. That was uh, rather educational. It actually went pretty well. Um, I don't have the full um, hull done yet. Got about two thirds of it done, which is nice. I found that the uh, rotary grinder was a little too aggressive, uh, a little unwieldy. The central shaft of it protruding out beyond the end, the plane of the grinder surface itself made it a little bit difficult to get a, a, a flat sort of sanding surface on the uh, bottom. You're, you're always at an angle, so you're cutting an edge in. Uh, a little unwieldy in that regard. So uh, using the 40 grit uh, sandpaper on the uh, orbital sander seem to work really, really well. There is uh, some pass-through in the hull as I was sanding back some of the material, got through to where it's about basically, you know, paper thin. We do have, uh, you know, a very minor breach in the hull right there. It's not from the, the landing itself, it's just from the actual 
working on it and sanding the material away to get a good substrate. So uh, i got probably another hour or so of sanding to go there. I'm uh, going to call it quits for the day, back at it tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be ready for uh, layups uh, after tomorrow's activity. So. Okay, so we're back under the airplane. First things first, uh, now that everything's cut back, I'll see if I can give you a little bit better view here of the uh, damaged area and how I've got it all cut back. Got a little bit of a poke through right here. We're gonna cover that. Um, I think I'm gonna have to cut that back a little bit more. And uh, with the uh, Dremel tool. And uh, then we'll be able to start our layout. You can see where I did have to grind back some, I ended up with a, a hole here, which I opened up and ground down more so that I can put a patch on the outside and one on the inside, uh, some fabric on the inside to uh, close off that, that area and uh, get a good firm repair for the bottom of the aircraft. So you can't really put wet cloth over a hole like that because it will sag, it will bubble on the inside. You won't be able to keep the multiple layers that you're trying to lay up together and keep bubbles out of there. Ask me how I know. So what you really have to do is uh, create uh, a patch of your own that you can then apply to that. Then I'll be able to go on the inside of the aircraft through the access panels and uh, lay up some more fabric on the inside to get adhesion uh, through this gap to the patch and uh, to the inside of the aircraft as well so that we have a nice strong and solid repair. So yesterday I uh, actually manufactured a patch, uh, three layers of material in the peel ply right now so I'm going to open this up and essentially it's a um, nylon fabric and the uh, epoxy doesn't stick to it. So you can put it, uh, I, I did this in a sort of a fold over of the material. And my patch is going to emerge from this side, hopefully, without much trouble. This is uh, three plies of basically um, a nine ounce fabric, this fabric right here. So when I made this patch it was um, three layers, um, small uh, piece, a slightly larger piece and another piece larger than that. I've got it trimmed back now and if you look at it, I mean, you probably can't see it on camera, but there's one side that is completely flat and the other side that sort of has a concave or curved nature to it due to the three layers. And that's the side that's going to go against the bottom of the aircraft because um, that area is sort of ground down into that same sort of shape. So that's going to be placed right up against the bottom of the uh, aircraft. Okay, so we've got our piece trimmed and I've also got another piece of fabric here that's going to go over it once I put this in place. So uh, I'm going to dip in there now and wet this up and hopefully get it in place and get it covered without too much uh, vulgarity. <laughs> wet down the area here a bit. And I'm going to wet down the piece. And I'm just going to stick that bad Larry in. I've trimmed it to size and shape and fitment. And After first try at uh, putting the patch in, I had to take it off and thin out the edges quite a bit uh, to get it more fabric-y in nature rather than a nice hard crisp edge on it. Stay. <laughs> and like we did yesterday, I'll wet down the surface here first. Put my piece of fabric on it, wet it all the way through. Put this bad Larry in place over my patch. 
because I want to get a little overlap everywhere. get rid of all those air bubbles as much as we can. And uh, it's in place now with the uh, fabric over the top uh, after the second try. Uh, so it's looking good and we're going to move on to getting the rest of the, uh, the fabric uh, laid up in the bottom of the airplane. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of the process I used to cut out the fiberglass shapes for use on the hull repair. I wanted to be able to cut out the glass shapes in a temperature and humidity controlled environment at home to keep the glass as clean and stable as possible. To do this, I taped a piece of clear plastic, which you can see in some of the later clips, onto the bottom of the aircraft and then traced over the damaged areas with a marker. After removing this plastic from the aircraft, I was able to use it as a template to size and cut the roughly two dozen layers of glass shapes needed for the repair. These glass triangles ranged in size from roughly one inch by six inches to nearly a foot wide and six feet long, and was predominantly nine and a half ounce glass with a couple finished layers of four ounce glass for a smoother finish. As you'll see in the following clips, they were laid up from small to large to give me the desired thickness all along the bottom of the hull repair. All the glass used was a bi-directional weave. So as we did yesterday, we're gonna mix up some epoxy by weight. <clears throat> Five parts of this to two parts of that, the hardener, and then the resin. So I mixed up a lot yesterday, so I'm gonna go with smaller batches today. by weight again. All right, it's just over 100, so I gotta get 40 of this in there. Now, I left this material, although it's hot as Hades down here in Florida right now, and high humidity, uh, I left the material underneath the aircraft in the air-conditioned enclosure so we have a much better environment in here, a much more stable environment in terms of humidity and temperature for this to uh, work on. So. There we go, 143. So that's close enough. And take that and we'll mix it up. All right, done. Let's mix this up. And again, we're just utilizing a stir stick and it's supposed to go 100 roughly. All right. It's nice and homogenous, no uh, streaking in there. start with small pieces and work to larger pieces. Huh. And you can't, I don't know whether you can see or not, but down here I've got my plastic laid out where I'm doing my uh, initial uh, wetting. Lay out some goop on the epoxy on the plastic. Make sure I got the smallest piece here. Which it appears I do. And wet that up. <clears throat> and putting the epoxy down on the plastic first allows you to wet your fabric from both sides so that you get a nice thorough saturation of the material and uh, again we'll put some up top here and we're going to be working get a wider area 
right here than what I've been currently working with with the patch. Just so that we uh, know we've got material on the bottom of the aircraft. Try not to disturb the patch area too much. Alright, first piece done. Here we go. And it's a triangle. We'll just slowly build up this area here. to get the air bubbles out, pull the material to where it needs to be. There we go, nice. What I'm trying to do is build up the profile of the material one layer at a time so that we get back to the original shape of the hull. All right, on. All right, on to the next. Epoxy down on the plastic. And next piece, bigger, longer. And wetting it from both sides. And then this will go up. glass on and I just want to give you a shot of it before uh, I uh, go ahead and uh, put the uh, peel ply on for the night. We've got uh, several layers of uh, nine ounce glass going down to uh, basically a four ounce glass at the top and uh, now uh, that it's filled and in and covered over I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some peel ply on right here again it's just basically nylon fabric the epoxy doesn't stick to it and then I'm going to use these rollers which are I don't know whether you can see it or not they have grooves in it and when you put the peel ply on and you roll with these uh, the excess uh, epoxy comes out, which is a good thing because it does two things. One, it gives you less weight, but more importantly, the glass ratio goes up, so it's a stronger matrix, basically. Let's do this. Well, um, I put the peel ply on, which is this green material down here that you can see, and uh, rolled it out. It wouldn't stay in place though because of uh, gravity. You can see the material is wet. That's excess uh, resin that was on there that came off of the peel ply. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. Uh, I think I've got enough layers on there. Um, I'm going to let this cure. I'll come back uh, tomorrow, do a little bit of uh, sanding on it, and I may do some more layups after that uh, to finish things off depending on how the shape looks after I do a rough sanding. Lastly, I thought I might have got away clean, but uh, I can feel I got some epoxy in my hair. This is going to be lovely to try to get on. So. <laughs> uh, I'll show you the clump of hair that comes out with it later. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, now that we've got all of the fiberglass work done underneath the aircraft, we spent a day of uh, grinding back uh, the damaged area and two days laying glass. And it's all uh, sanded back now. So we're going to end this uh, video at this point and uh, pick up on the next video when we do our epoxy and micro balloon putty work on the bottom, which will help us attain the very final shape of the aircraft's hull itself. Uh, then we'll be ready to uh, sand and prime and paint. I'm not sure whether we'll combine the putty work with the priming and painting, or we'll save the priming and painting for its own video. But stay tuned. We've got a lot more for you as we get our wonderful C-Max back in the air. 
Thanks for joining us. We'll see you the next time. Cheers.